Welcome to Present Truth Broadcast with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, brought to you by Present Truth Ministry, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. I wanted to go through um, a series on faith, but I wanted it to just come back to basics. I wanted us to go through the basics again on the subject of faith. And then it's very important that we go through it, we understand it, we um, not only understand it, but remind ourselves again of the subject of faith. Let's start from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 11. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 11. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 11. The Bible says, By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. So in that verse of scripture, you find something. You find that Sarah was able to receive strength from God to conceive when she was past the age of childbearing. So naturally or biologically, um, the doctors have given up on Sarah, right? Right? Yeah, the doctors have given up on Sarah. There was no way she could have a child. The Bible says she was past the age. So that means it was a done deal biologically. It wasn't going to be possible for Sarah to have a child. But we know that Sarah had a child, Isaac. How did that child come to pass? By the spoken word of God. Amen. By the spoken word of God. But Hebrews 11, 11 tells us a secret about Sarah. She says she judged God faithful who had promised. So this tells us something about faith, right? That faith begins where the promise of God is known. Faith begins where? Where the promise of God is known. That if God gives you his promise, it can become the basis of faith. So faith doesn't originate with man. Faith originates with who? With God. All right? So it is when God speaks that faith comes. Are we together? When God speaks, that's when faith comes. So faith is not something we are trying to get. Faith is rather believing on what God had said. So if I want to say I'm having faith for something, the first question I want to ask you is, is this something you've heard from God about? Is this something that God has spoken to you about? Is this something that you've heard from God? You know, because sometimes we look, we, we, looking at the faith journey, most of us say, oh, I was believing God for this thing and it didn't happen. I was believing God for this thing and it didn't happen. And what you find out is people just go out believing for whatever they want to believe. <laughs> Come on, are we together? People just decide, oh, I'm going to believe God for this. I'm going to believe God for this. But you see here, the Bible says, she judged him faithful who had promised. I want you to, to understand that. Who had promised. That's why I said, let's go back to the faith basics. Let's just go through the whole subject of faith again and begin to see where we are making mistakes and begin to adjust ourselves. So from the life of Sarah, we observe that faith starts from the spoken word of God. Right? That faith is not just something we try to get. Faith is not something we're trying to make God to do something for us. But rather, faith is believing on what has been spoken. And spoken by who? By God. Praise God. Now, the Bible says she receives strength to conceive seed. Now, interesting. We know that conception happens um, between the male and the female when they come together. But we also know that because Sarah was past the age of childbearing, that couldn't give her seed. Right? So what happened is that the Bible says she received strength to conceive. So the question is, how did she get this strength? This strength was from God. That tells us that faith helps us to tap into the ability of God. I, I, are you following that? That if a man is paralyzed and he has faith in the word of God, that faith gives strength. So faith is the, the lifestyle 
with which we draw on divine strength. You realize the Bible says that she was already past the age of childbearing. So that means that she couldn't give birth. Now, but the Bible tells us also that she received strength to conceive. But she received strength to conceive because she had faith. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive. By faith. So faith was the way by which Sarah received strength. So what this tells us in a very simple way is that when the promise of God comes and you believe in that promise, which is your faith, so God promises and there's your faith, and both of them come together, there is divine strength for accomplishment. So when God tells you something and you need to get a hold of that, you need to believe into that. And when that happens, what you realize is faith is manifested and then there's divine strength. So the two things we want to check right here is this. Do we have the word of God concerning that thing we're believing for? Is there a promise from God? And if there is a promise from God, then the next question we want to ask ourselves is, are we believing into that promise? And if there is a promise from God and there is a belief into that promise, what now happens is that there is divine you know, power and divine energy released for what? For the manifestation of that promise. Now you realize this now, that by this divine strength that Sarah received, she was able to nullify the report of the doctor. Yeah? It means that the doctor says you can't give birth. And Sarah says, okay, biologically I can. But if the word of God comes and I believe in the word of God, then I have Isaac to prove for it. So it means that faith can defy natural biological verdicts. It doesn't matter how sick the doctor says you are. If you've got God's word on healing, and you act on that word, then you can be healed. Amen. I said amen. amen. All right. So let's go to Mark eleven twenty three. Like I said, I just want to go through the faith basics again. Mark eleven twenty three. So I might be saying things you already know, and um, just go through them again. Go through them again. It's always important to remind ourselves of the basics. Mark chapter eleven and verse twenty three. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mark eleven twenty three. Okay. Yeah, I like this story. Very interesting story. Let's start reading from verse twenty. Now, in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, "What did Peter remember? That Jesus cursed the fig tree. Amen." And you know, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, Jesus wasn't cursing the fig tree with a lot of energy. He didn't say, oh, thou fig tree that did not give me fruit, I curse you. No, he didn't do that. <laughs> what did Jesus do? He just said, no man will eat from thee again. L let me say this. Sometimes we think that faith, you know, for instance, if I say I want to confess God's word, right? Like I position myself, I want to confess God's word. And then I start pacing the floor. I say in the name of Jesus, uh, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm a success and not a failure. The spirit of God lives in me. You know, and I start making all of those confessions. Then in our hearts, right, we're making faith confessions. Why? Because we have decided we want to make confessions, right? I said, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Then you realize that you go talk to your neighbor. You're talking with your neighbor, just gisting with your friend. And your friend says, ah, this country, I don't understand, you know, why things are this way. And then you say, ah, myself, I don't understand. We just pray somebody will not fail one day. Now, I'm giving an example now. Now, let me ask you, do you think what you have just said is a confession? Okay, some people say no, some people say yes. Actually, you have just confessed. To confess means to say something. Right? Confess means to say what? To say something. And that's what you've just done. So that's the challenge. People always think that faith confession is about setting the time, setting the place. It's good. It's good to do that. You should have times where you confess the word. And then, but they do all of that confession, and then their daily talk is opposite of everything they've confessed. So you realize that when Jesus was causing this fig tree, Jesus did not really have to you know, like, oh, it's, it's, it's causing the fig tree time now. 
All right, let's get ready. Bring out your confession cards. Let's cause the victory. No, what did Jesus do? Jesus just spoke. And that speaking had enough power to do what? To dry up the victory. Are we together? Talk to me. Are we together? It's the same thing. Your daily conversations, listen to this, miss this, I like this. Your daily con conversations are your daily confessions. Your daily conversations are what? Your daily what? Confession. Let's say that together. Say my daily conversation, my daily conversation. is my daily confession. You know, I know some of you are scared to say that. It's like, God, please, everything I've said today in the name of Jesus, please don't let it happen. Your daily conversation is what? Is your daily confession. So Jesus just said, no one is going to eat from you anymore. And bam, that's it. The power of God was released. So Peter said, remembering, said, Rabbi, look, means Jesus wasn't looking. Jesus believed what he said. Right? Because he said, Rabbi, look. So that means Jesus wasn't looking. Jesus was just walking past. Him. And Peter said, wow, Rabbi, look. The fig tree which you caused has withered. So when Jesus said that, Jesus was not expecting the fig tree not to wither. Right? Yeah? Come on. Jesus was not expecting it not to happen. You know the reason why you talk the way you talk? You don't expect your words to come to pass. If you expect your words to come to pass, you will not talk negatively. You don't have faith in your own words. So when you are praying, you say the right words. Oh God, I know I'll make it. I know I'll make it. And then when you jump into the taxi and everybody say, man, we can't make it. Say, hey, my sister. I have even thought about it. And I've concluded. Making it is not possible. You don't believe. So religiously, you say something, but really, you don't believe that your words will come to pass. Let me ask you something. If Jesus is to stand before you today and say, listen, Everything you say in the next 30 days will come to pass. Do you think you will talk differently? Come on, talk to me, saints. Do you think you will talk differently? So the question is, why are you waiting for Jesus to stand before you? Because let's look at what Jesus said now. For G so Jesus answered and said to them, have the faith in God. Or have the God kind of faith. For assuredly I say to you, is Jesus talking to us? Okay. Whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Is that what Jesus is telling us? Well, how many of you believe this? If you believe this, you won't talk the way you're talking about your life. Now, I want to bring out some things here. Number one, Jesus says, have the God kind of faith. Now, we, he was telling them to have the God kind of faith. If Jesus were to talk to us today, he would not tell us to have the God kind of faith. You know why? Because when we got born again, God has dealt to us the measure of faith. So we have it. At new birth, we already have the God kind of faith in us. Right? Right? Okay. Romans. He has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Then he says, whosoever says to this mountain. Now, like I said, I just want to go through the faith basics. Let's look at this. Did Jesus say we should pray about the mountain? No. He tells us to speak to the mountain. Not to even speak to him about the mountain, but to do what? To speak to what? To the mountain. Not to speak to God about the mountain. What did he say? You speak to the mountain. Address the mountain. Why? Because he has given you authority. So if there's a mountain in your life, just talk to it. Speak to it. So he says, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes, this is the key now, but believes that those things he says will be done. He has to believe that the things he says will be done. What's going to happen? He will have whatever he says. Our confession is critical to our future. Your confession is critical to your future. This broadcast is made possible by friends and partners of Present Truth. 
To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. God bless you. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats. Purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga. Please call plus 234 805 888 7575. One of the areas we know um, how spiritually matured you are is by the way you talk. Your words give you up. Your words give you up. We cannot outgrow the subject of confessing the word of God and letting the word of God stay in our lips. You must train yourself to say the things you only want to see. Regardless of how difficult the situation is, you must learn to maintain consistency in your confession, consistency in your declaration. And that's the fight of it. What do you think is the fight of it? That's the fight of faith. The fight of faith is insisting to say, right, what God said while the contrary is happening. That's the fight of faith. That's where the fight is. But the Bible calls it a good fight. Why? Because the word of God will always prevail. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you heard things happen in your life? Maybe you remember these were some of the things you were saying maybe 10, 15 years ago. Have anybody experienced that? Something just happened? And you just realize, oh, I used to say this way back. Right? Hey, come on, talk to me now. Yes, right? Yes, or you see some of your classmates who used to always say something consistently. And you just realize, maybe the guy always say, ah, well, I like farming. You know, we're not talking about confession now. just talking about talking. I like farming. Ah, I like farming. I like farming. Then maybe 15 years down the line, you stumble on the guy and say, hey, what are you doing now? He said, oh, I have a farm. You say, ah, you always said it. Yeah, you always said you'll be a farmer, right? Or again, in the negative, you always had somebody who always was thinking of how to make money by others, and you heard the guy is in prison that he stole. You say, ah, that guy, he was always talking about money. So, so listen now, you don't expect the guy's life to go contrary to his consistent confession. Now, that's you. We're not talking about God now. We're just talking about classmates, right? That if something happens and you hear, heard about it, you say, oh, that man always talks that way. I don't, I, 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 uh, yeah, I'm sure. Now, naturally, you believe that people's consistent confession will determine how their life turns out. Now, why do you think in your own life it's going to be the same? It's not going to be the same. It's not going to be different, sorry. It's going to be the same. You are going to turn out in the way that your confession is. And you know, when it's for other people, it's quick for us to admit, oh, that's what you're saying, that's what you keep saying, that's what you become. Sometimes it's hard to admit that we are not saying the right things about our own lives. That we are not saying the right things about our children. I mean, this is your little boy, you, it's insult upon insult. You, 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 you know, with the child, you learn new insults. Whatever you pick from the market, you experiment on the child. You know, whatever you hear from the television, you experiment on the child. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? A few years down the line, the child begins to turn that way. He's like, I don't know where she even got this character from. You created it. Our words dominate us. Our words are creative forces. We're not just talking. Your mouth is not just meant to test food. You're not just talking. There's nothing like, I'm just talking. You're not just talking. Your words are confessions. <laughs> Your words are confessions. Your words are declared. There are things that as a child of God should never come out of your mouth. Never. Praise the name of the Lord. There are things as a child of God should never come out of your mouth. You just know 
the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That means there are certain things that the redeemed of the Lord can say. That means that the redeemed of the Lord has what? Has specific confessions. Praise the name of the Lord. If we take God's word serious, our lives will turn out right. Yeah. If we would take God's word serious, your life will turn out right. I remember the early days when we were learning about faith. Uh, we just got married, myself and my wife. We had to put, we were like monitors to each other. So if I say something, my wife will say, you would have what you say. I'll say, no, 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 no. I'll quickly correct myself. And that's how we trained ourselves. To the point where, right now, when I make a confession that's not right, I quickly correct myself. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Let's go to Mark chapter 5. There's a story there I want us to examine. You know the, the story of the woman with the issue of blood, right? Okay. That woman, I'm sure everybody has preached about that woman. Wow. I'm just thinking now. That woman would just say, ah, they have mentioned me again. All right. <laughs> woman with the issue of blood. Everybody preaches this woman. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, let's start reading from this now. Verse 25. Now a certain woman, Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. How many years did this woman suffer? You know, if we as men read this story, we don't understand it, right? It's a man that doesn't have a flow of blood. But it's a woman that will understand what it means to have a constant flow of blood for 12 years. All right? And suffered many things from many physicians. You know, when I read the scripture, I like paying attention to details. She suffered many things from many physicians. So we can tell ourselves that she went to many hospitals. Right? We can also tell ourselves she went to many doctors. Right? So we can tell ourselves... She suffered many things <laughs> in the hands of many hospitals and in the hands of what? Many doctors. This is not doctor's fault now. It's just the woman suffering. And she spent all that she had. So that tells us she had something. Like she had money, right? Because you cannot spend what you don't have. And she spent all she had. It wasn't that she spent her wrapper. She spent money. Okay. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. So this tells us that the, the, the product of her hospital visitations was that she was growing worse. You know, sometimes, I was teaching today, um, recording our television broadcast, and I was, I, was talking on, I was teaching on a subject on healing, and, and I was talking on John chapter 6. The Bible says, the spirit gives life. And right there, while I was recording, it came to my heart that, you know, it's not our exercise that gives us life. It's not the food we eat that gives us life. It's what that gives life, the spirit. Are those things good? <laughs> they are good. You should exercise. I do exercise. I try my best. But what is the source of life? The spirit. Because I was telling myself, if it's just about being fit that gives life, footballers shouldn't die on the field. Because those guys are paid to exercise. You know, it's like they pay you. Like, guy, go to the gym. Go on. You know? So it's the spirit that gives life. Now, the reason I'm emphasizing this is some of us in our heart, we don't want to get into the world of healing because we feel we have money. Oh, if, if at the worst case scenario, we'll just fly abroad. <laughs> she went to many physicians. Right? And then at the end of the day, she grew worse. Doctors are wonderful people. But you see, her money and everything went to the doctors. When she heard about Jesus, how does faith come? How does faith come? By hearing. So if I'm not hearing, I can't have faith. Right? And that's something in your life. You must constantly make sure that you're hearing the words of faith. Can I tell you something? Do you know do you know that as I'm teaching right now, I've taught this message before. I've taught this message up to six times. But as I'm teaching it right now, what's happening to me that I'm teaching it? Faith is rising in my heart. 
Do you know why? How many of you have read this story before? Woman with the issue of blood. And you were blessed by it. How many of you know you are going to be blessed tonight? Why? The word of God is ever fresh. That's why you should have a habit of listening to the word of God. When we say get the messages, we're not even saying buy them anymore. They are all free now. We're not saying buy them. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I can't, I'm just saying now. I can't wait to stand before God. And then they bring one of the church members. I say, this guy's faith was not going to say, God, they were free. On WhatsApp, ask him. <laughs> so we're not saying bye. Right? And you don't have time to listen to the messages. What do you do in the morning when you get up? Put on the message. You know, some of you get up and you want to get up with the news. Let me tell you something. The news is never good. Because good news is not news. Yeah. You would hear that somebody died. They were killing somebody. There was an accident. You would just hear them. Start your day with God's word. Load your phone with the word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let faith come. Let faith come. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email office at Pastor Max at NG. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.